that all praise is due to Allah who gave me the ability to diffuse the situation. People might recognize me as a hero. I might get all the awards that are possible. I might even get recognized by the president for my heroic actions. But I know that all I did was I acted on my instinct and I did what I had to do. And everything that I used in order to take care of this, it came from God. So this is just one example, brothers and sisters, and it shows us something very important. It shows us that in this world, this world is something, is, 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 is a type of existence in which Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala operates, but He operates through different means. It's the act of God, but the act of God can show up in a number of different ways. It can be a teacher who's running and throwing himself to prevent the student from bomb bomb bombing the school. It can be a teacher who's standing up in front of the classroom, writing up on the board. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in the Quran, Allama al-insana ma lam ya'lam. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is the one who teaches the human being what he doesn't know. Now you go to school, and your teacher's writing up on the board, you're taking notes. And suddenly this realization dawns upon you. You, know, you understand, for example, what, what a derivative is all about. And it's a teacher who taught you. But wait a minute. Is it that Allah is a teacher? Allah SWT says in the Quran that He's the teacher. But the teacher is the one who's teaching you. So you're thankful to that teacher. But ultimately you say, Alhamdulillah, who made this teacher the means by which He delivered that knowledge to me. It's a means. But the credit goes to Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Other examples in life that come about. Sometimes you see these acts of, of compassion and mercy that can really move you. Like sometimes you see a mother who dedicates so much to her child. So much. You know, I mean, any, any mother. Any mother. Because when you, know, when you have an infant, it's... The mother has to put in so much effort just to take care of the infant, waking up every two hours to feed it, so much effort. And you see that they keep on doing it and they have that spirit of love and wanting to nourish and to train and to educate. And they never, never lose that spirit. Even when that same child, the infant grows into a child, then grows into a teenager, then grows into an adult, the mother has that same spirit. She has just given and given and given, and the child has just gotten and gotten and gotten, Without any expectation of anything back from that child, the mother keeps on giving. And if you look at some of the examples of good mothers, it just moves you to tears at how much they've done, even our own mothers. How much have they done for us? Or you go to the medical profession. I, I remember that when we had my first child, my, my child, my son, a few years ago, we were in a hospital and there was a number of nurses that were attending to us, and they would take shifts. Like once in a while, they would just come in, knock on the door, say, "You know, how's it going? Do you need anything?" And you could tell that some of them were just, you know, basically just getting their salary and you know doing their job, but not really going above and beyond the call of duty. But I recall that there was one particular nurse. Now, those of you who haven't experienced the, the, those couples who haven't experienced uh, the the beautiful. A wonderful, wonderful experience of, of giving birth to a child. May Allah SWT grant you uh, children who are, are righteous, inshallah. Those of you who are seeking to have children, may Allah SWT give you that tawfiq, inshallah. But those of you who know, you'll know that having a first child is a very traumatic experience. And you really need support and help because you don't really know what you're doing. There's this little screaming, little ball of energy that's, you know, just hungry all the time and thirsty all the time, going to the bathroom all the time. You don't know what to do, okay? So you need that particular, you need that care, you need that attention. So there's one nurse I remember, and she was just something amazing. She would come in and she would go beyond the call of duty. She would ask us, you know, how are things going, and really find out what is it that I can do. And it was to the point where we felt that she really wanted to help us. And she was the one who, you know, showed us some of the things that we really needed to know in that situation. And when we look back and we look at that whole experience, we think about the services that she did. It can really bring tears to our eyes. And she wasn't even a Muslim, I don't think. But when I look back, I see that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala was channeling His mercy and compassion through this lady. This was an act of God. She was a channel. There was no difference. If I wanted the mercy of God, if I look back and I can say, Oh God, 
I thank you for your help at that time because you showed me your mercy. I can say that and I can say that that woman showed me her mercy because it's one and the same thing. Allah was channeling, He was displaying His perfection through that woman to a certain extent. Now, brothers and sisters, let's step back and look at the position of those individuals whom Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has said that these individuals I'm identifying to you as people who not only reflect part of my perfection from time to time. Okay, like this, this teacher who performed that act of heroism, he showed some courage and some strength, but he's not like that all the time. This was an, a, a random act. But there are some individuals who show the perfection of Allah SWT at all times, and they show it to the maximum extent. And these are the prophets and these are the Ahlul Bayt you see, when we say that someone like Imam Ali salam has perfection, that we can get things from him, we can ask him for something, we should know that what we're asking from him is nothing but the thing that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala has made, has given him access to. And this is what we find within the testimony of these prophets and the Ahlul Bayt themselves. For example, if you go to the Quran, you'll see that when the Prophet Jesus, Nabi Isa Islam, he was able to do amazingly extraordinary acts. He could heal, he could restore eyesight to blind people, he could bring dead people to life. But when he's doing these acts, he makes sure to tell people that I'm doing this with the permission of my Lord. It's with the permission of my Lord, meaning that everything that I have, it's from God. It's not from me. If you ask me, I know nothing. I don't do anything. It's the, the, what God has enabled me to do. That's allowing me to perform such amazing, extraordinary acts. Or you look at the case of Imam Ali Nisa. As the brother, as, uh, first of all, I want to commend the brothers who recited the poetry. One of the brothers mentioned about the battle of Khaybar. You know that we all learned from when we were kids that Imam Ali Islam performed an amazing act of bravery and strength in Khaybar. And what happened was that you know this was a fortress. There was there was a gate. There was sort of you know they would close the fortress up. And after Imam Ali Islam had fought the Marhab, the champion of the of the Jewish people who were enclosed in that fortress. Afterwards, he loses his shield. So he needs a shield, and history reports, this isn't just fairy tales, history, historical reports, multiple historical reports that all Muslims accept, even non-Muslims, they report that he needed a shield, so he sees the gate, and so he rips it off.